theme song that issued in uh, the duo that was to take uh, Melbourne Radio by storm, Nikki and uh, and Nancy Lee, and uh, and we have uh, we have Gary Witter on the line, Nikki and Nancy Lee's son. Hello, uh, Gary. Hello, Bruce. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, well, as you know, Gary, hi to you. Nice to talk to you in Shepparton. There's an exhibition coming on at the Performing Arts Museum later this week. And I would imagine that you and your brother Michael have provided a lot of the material. Yes, yes. When uh, Mum passed away back in '91, or, or just prior to that happening, she'd made it quite clear that uh, uh, she would like the a uh, lot of the material that we had to go to uh, Frank von Stratton at uh, at the uh, Performing Arts Museum. Was there a lot there, uh, Gary? Yes, it. it um I suppose over the years there, there, there's also a lot gone missing as well too that was, was loaned uh, here and there and uh, in some cases didn't find its way back. But there were a, a number of scrapbooks um, with cuttings of uh, uh, that, that very exciting era and um, some other bits and pieces too, that uh, memorabilia that uh, had been collected along the way too. I can only remember your father in his later time uh, at 3UZ, and I'm talking about the early mid-50s, when he was doing morning with, uh, with Mum and Graham Kennedy. And uh, I, I would wag school, really, literally, to, uh, to stay home and listen. I, I was just fascinated by his work. Yes, in, in those days, of course, Mum, uh, at 3UZ, Mum wasn't playing such a big role in the program at that time. Um, it, was, it was through his panel operators that uh, he, he sort of um, created the sort of program that became so very popular. So what are your memories of, of Mum and Dad, especially Dad to start with? Because I imagine you were fairly young when Nicky passed away, Gary. I was, I was 12, Philip. Yes. Um... Memories, it's uh, so hard to put it into a few words, but a, a man who worked extraordinarily long hours. Um, he had his, his radio commitment. Uh, he used to work at Tracy Speedway at Maribyrnong. That would maybe bring back a few memories for people. Yes. Um, my memories of him personally, uh, he, w he was a person who loved to get into the garden. That was his big release in life. But for he and, and I as a father and son, uh, we used to go up to um, a, a friend's property uh, called Parklands up at Balan, and um, Dad taught me to shoot from about age six. We used to go out and um, miss more than we hit and those sorts of things, but it was, it was uh, really the only time and the only place that I had him all to myself. From what I've read and understood about Dad, he was a homebody. He loved to get home early and, uh, and almost get into bed at a very early uh, time. Well, particularly on Sundays, his, his routine was to, as I mentioned, he loved his garden and he would work in the garden on a Sunday. And um, he used to get into bed about uh, six o'clock, I think it was. Uh, and um, mum would bring him uh, his evening meal in, in, in bed and uh, he'd probably be asleep by about eight o'clock or something. But with the hours that he was putting in and the the strain of what he was doing um, it was it was one way that sort of kept him going Gary as a youngster did you resent having to share your father with thousands of Victorians who loved him oh I, I couldn't say Phil you'd, you'd have to have been in a position to have been able to compare what it was like having a, a regular sort of a dad I suppose so I certainly didn't feel any resentment I just uh, accepted that this uh, this was uh, the nature of the relationship that I had with him or that we had with him in the in the t in the time that we got to see him but yes he was a, a very busy person did he have his ups and downs Gary yes well I think we all certainly have that and um, uh, there were a lot of pressures that came with the position that he had. Um, radio, even in those days, was a fairly political beast, and uh, Dad uh, sort of copped his fair share of that as well, too, at various times. Uh, what, uh, station management and uh, changes? Hmm, yes. I'm sure you, you, uh, we've all been through it. Well, we have. I mean, it's the nature of the beast, isn't it? It comes with the property. Yes, yes. But your father was, to my knowledge, a very sensitive man, and uh, would have taken things like that very badly where perhaps he was reprimanded or or told to do things a different way yes i i think it's um, it's it's true of anybody who as you say philip is a, a sensitive person that 
uh, they tend to feel things the uh, the deepest. And yet, being the professional that he was, uh, as far as the, the public were concerned, I'm sure they would never be aware of, of uh, the goings-on. It was Mum who used to get to see the, the soft side and see the, uh, the pain and strain and all those sorts of things that went along with it. Talking to various people in the business, and particularly Melbourne Radio, at the time that uh, your father finished his program and, uh, and subsequently uh, his illness, there was a time when uh, there was a big change. Television was about to hit Melbourne. Uh, Lewis Bennett had brought in and intended to bring in rock and roll. And uh, I wonder how your father felt about that time. Well, Dad was, uh, and this is this is uh, my memory of it anyway. But I believe that Dad was one of the very first uh, people signed for television, and he was uh, to have done a children's program on Channel Nine, um, and and that uh, and seeing the Olympic Games in Melbourne um, were two of the the major things in his life that we just uh, never never he never got to actually uh, see. Would he have made it on television? Well, we, we um, and I say that we, the, the family, sort of talked about that um, for quite some time, wondering whether uh, he'd been taken at that time because that was, um, uh, uh, I suppose, part of his special magic was, was the intimacy that he created using radio so well. And yet he'd also done a lot of stage and theatre work, and, and so uh, there was the other side to him as well. But um, who, who knows? Who knows? Gary, um, we're talking to Gary Witter, the oldest son of uh, Nikki and Nancy Lee. We'll ask about Michael a little later. Tell us about your father's uh, stage work, theatre work. Well, it's um, it's it's all hearsay on my part. I, I think, um, with the exception of of um, the Plaza Northcote, I remember seeing he and Graham performing out there once, and that's my only memory of actually seeing him on stage. And people like Joff Allen were there, um, and a number of the the people who went into television in the early days but I think uh, dad uh, and, and once again this is this is just uh, these are memories from a long time ago but he also used to do um, a lot of community singing he would go out and um, uh, long before the days of, of mass entertainment that we enjoy today um, the simple things were uh, providing real enjoyment for people and, and one of those was uh, a slideshow using glass slides with the words to songs and I guess a pianist who'd play the melodies and he'd get up there and conduct this community singing that that really um, apparently was was very strong he always came over in uh, in a medium that was full of the very uh, plumb in the voice sounding uh, announcers, or in the case of Norman Banks, a little through the nose. Uh, Nicky came over as the the bloke next door, or your favourite uncle. He spoke the the sounds of the streets, didn't he? Almost like a, a banjo Patterson mm. or Henry Lawson. I, I think, um, um, once again, this is only from what I've heard, but that maybe wasn't as true in the early days. He was uh, as formal as anyone else in the days where announcers would have to wear uh, tails and, and bow ties to work. It was, it was all very formal. Um, but then over an involvement that occurred and, um, and it was most evident in the, in, the, in the program he was doing in the 50s at the time he died, it, it, he had developed this very relaxed, very personal sort of style and uh, I think that was the real breakthrough for him. He was um, certainly uh, very popular uh, sort of communicating on that level. Was he funny at home when you had relatives and friends in, say for a Saturday night party? Would he be the life of the party? I think I must have been sent to bed by those times. I, I, I don't really have those sorts of memories, you know, of being part of parties. Yes. Well, uh, let's ask about Graham Kennedy, who, uh, thanks to your father, became the star that he is today, being uh, Nicky's panel operator at three years in. Did Nicky become a close uh, family friend of your father and, and your mother, Nancy Lee? Would he visit? Yes, yes. Graham used to pop round, and, and Mum would look after him with home-cooked meals and all the rest of it. Actually, Graham was, was wonderful after... Uh, Dad passed away. Um, my brother became very ill. He had pneumonia and he had um, uh, terrible problems with his lungs and it was recommended that he get up to a drier climate. And um, Mum decided, and I don't know why, but she decided on Robinvale and she'd heard of a, a guest house that was up there and Graham was good enough to offer to, to drive us up there, uh, Michael and Mum and I, 
And so we got into his uh, brand new Vauxhall Velox. Well, it was a second hand car, but it was, I think, Graham's first car, and he was so proud of it. I remember as we were bringing out the suitcases and things, there he was, sort of polishing it and getting it absolutely magnificent. And we set off on, on what was really, by any standards, a, a very long trip in those days. And um, it was all going well until we came to floodwaters. And uh, while the car sat there and Mum and Graham uh, deliberated as to whether they would proceed or not, I asked that there was a, a truck that was pulling vehicles through the floodwaters and I asked if I could sort of have a ride on this truck. So uh, I got on the back of this truck and got a tow across and Mum and Graham were sitting in the car and Mum saying, look, we can't go on. I don't want you putting your lovely car through all this flood water. You know, who knows what will happen, all the rest of it. And Graham said, I'm sorry, we've got to go on. And Mum said, what do you mean? And he said, look, and there was me on the other side of the flood water I'd been dropped off by the truck and it had kept going. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else for miles and miles except uh, yours truly. So uh, Graham took us... Uh, we didn't actually see a lot of Graham for a while after that. But, um, but you no, know, he was... Uh, I'm sure he was a, a big help to Mum in those very trying times. And, and let's talk about your mother. Did she miss uh, not being in the public eye towards the end when, when she obviously was bringing up yourself and young Michael? Um, well, there's, that's quite a long period you're talking about, Phil. Um, she, in fact, uh, got back into show business and she was doing a program on 3UZ, I remember. Um, um, and I can't, I'm trying to think of the name, but there were a couple of programs. Getting to Know You. Yes, yes. For Hunter's Products, I think. That's right, yes. And also doing television at GTB early on. That's right, yes. It did uh, Lady for a Day. She was um, doing commercials on that program and uh, a couple of others. And um, and so there was quite a period there where she was uh, very involved in entertainment again. Um, but then moving through that, from the time that that sort of um, ceased to happen, and as you know, she used to get a lot of enjoyment from your program, and um, from time to time she would phone you up. But um, towards the end, she became almost reclusive. She was not happy about the way her appearance was changing and she wanted people to remember her the way she used to be and and even though um, people who loved her very much uh, and wanted to see her and accept her for just the way she was you know she she tended to be quiet and sort of uh, tend to want to, to keep away from all of that. Gary uh, I remember at a time when you were offered a job at 3KZ for the morning women, I think it was 9 till 12, the morning women's announced the spot at that time. Yeah. And I think it was almost the publicity was the new Nikki. Um, did you find that difficult to stand in your father's shoes or how did you feel? Well, it was, um, it's something that you grow up with, I suppose. And the last thing that I, I wanted was to be seen to be trying to uh, to take advantage of that situation. I always wanted to try and make it in my own right. My lifelong ambition at that point was to try and emulate my father by having top ratings in Melbourne radio uh, in Melbourne in that particular time slot. Uh, the irony was that I achieved it not, not to the same magnitude as Dad. I mean, it was a different kettle of fish altogether, but as the rating surveys went, I'd achieved top ratings at, I think, about age 24. and. It, w it was a very unsettling experience in that I, I, I couldn't handle the thought of, um, of then doing that for the rest of my life. And um, I suppose it was, it was uh, those unsettling thoughts that led me into to getting involved in other areas of radio and selling and, and uh, the sort of things that we're doing now. Well, I think uh, your parents, Nikki and Nancy, would be very proud of you and Michael and where you are today. Just for the sake of our listeners tonight, tell us where you're at, uh, Gary, and what Michael's doing. Well, um, my wife Julie and I reside in Shepparton, uh, in Victoria. Um, I work with Goulburn Valley Broadcasters, who started up Sun FM uh, just a couple of years ago, 1989, and uh, they late last year acquired the licence also from the uh, traditional AM radio station 3SR. So now we, we run what's known as a combo, Sun FM in, in stereo and uh, 3SR still as an AM radio station. And um, it's going along very nicely, thank you. And my brother Mike is, is up on the Sunshine Coast. He's, uh, he's uh, working at the radio station at Nambour at 4SS and uh, has a, a wonderful lifestyle up there and, and thinks that us Victorians are all pretty mad for staying down here where it's so cold at, at this time of the year. Oh, hasn't it been, yes. 
Well, Gary, it's been lovely talking to you, not only reminiscing with you about your past, but also speaking of your uh, wonderful uh, mother and father, whose uh, uh, artefacts and memories are on display at the Performing Arts Museum from July the 23rd, under a, a great title, Laugh Away Your Worries, part of the Chum Song. Thanks, Gary. Thank you very much, Bruce. And, and uh, just quickly before I go, I know that um, if Mum were here, she'd like to thank you and Philip for the great warmth that you brought into her life and, uh, and uh, the help you've given her over the years. Oh, that's lovely. That really is. Well, thank you for that. I think uh, your mother was gracious enough to grant the last interview she ever gave, and she was very reluctant to, to do that too, Gary, without you twisting her arm. Mm, yes. Well, as I, I mentioned, Mum sort of uh, tended to shy away from the spotlight uh, toward the latter years, but uh, she she had a very happy time and um, she went quietly in her sleep and I, I don't think anyone can hope for better than that. Oh no, no, that's true. Gary Witter, thank you for spending time with us on Remember When and here's a, a memory of the famous duo, your mum and dad, Nikki and Nancy Lee. Now, you're not a bit grateful to me for helping you out of a predicament, Nikki Pickles?